You may be handsome, Harry, but it seems you don't have heart for real gambling. You want to bet five grand? Sure, I'll bet you five grand, Duke. Put it down. Put it down. Good, Dice. Now roll them out. Roll them out. Too bad. Well, Duke, bet clean. I'll have to give you an IOU for the ten grand I borrowed. That's okay. You can have more if you want it. Your credit's good with me. No, thanks. But I'll be back tonight after I close the club up. I hope you're still here, because I'd like to get even. Don't worry. I'll be right here waiting for you. And you'd better bring plenty, too, because I'd sure like to win that golden slipper club from you. Why, that's the best money-making spot in Harlem. And if I own that spot, I wouldn't have to bother gambling with you for your money. I'd just lay back and rig it in the way you do. Oh, yeah? Well, you're not smart enough to win the gold slipper away from me, too. And even if you did, I'd open up an opposition to you and run you out of business. Uh, I've got the greatest stars in the business under contract for me. People come to the Golden Slippers to see man tan and tall tan and terrific, and without them, the club wouldn't be worth a plug nickel. You stick to your own racket, Duke, and I'll be back tonight to get even. Dig you later. Why, God. Yeah, what good would the club be without TNT? But maybe we can straighten that, too.
88 reasons why they'll stick to you. When you strike those black and whites, oh, they sound so blue. Minuets and modern swing, old time tunes with a brand new thing. There are 88 reasons why they go for you. Now, for the next of our show, the Golden Slipper Club proudly presents the one and only Ben Tan Ballers. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I got a brother by the name of Morland. He's an RAF. So Mr. Churchill said, look here, Morland. He said, I want you to go to Germany with the rest of the squadron and drop some pamphlets and be back here at 6 o'clock in the morning. Morland says, aye, aye, sir. So Morland went over with the rest of the squadron. At 6 o'clock, the rest of the squadron was back, but no more. 7 o'clock, no more. 8 o'clock, no more. So Mr. Churchill said, good gracious, says, where's Morland? I told him to come back with the rest of the squadron, and he ain't back yet, and it's 8 o'clock, and that time, here come Morland. Oh, my. Mr. Churchill looked at him and says, Morland, did I tell you to go to the Germany and drop the rest of them pamphlets and come back with the rest of the squadron? What kept you so late? He said, did you say it? He said, ah. He says, I was over there pushing them under people's doors. <laughs> you know what? Now, my same brother, they told him when he first got in RM, says, look here, said, we're going to make a parachute troop out of you. He said, I don't want to jump out of no plane. He said, supposing I get there in the parachute door. He said, that's all right. You go in there, too. He says, I'll try. So he gets in. He said, now, supposing that thing open when I he said, all you got to do is to count three, and you jump, and you pull your cord. And if it don't open, jump four more feet down, and you pull your emergency cord. Then if it don't open, said, look down on the ground, and you'll see a beautiful spot. And said, when you get down there, the ambulance will be waiting for you. Take it right on to the hospital. Mona said, that's all right. <laughs> so he got in the plane and he jumped out. He got about three feet and the chute didn't open. So he got about five feet further and he pulled an emergency cord and it wouldn't open. So Mona looked down on the ground and said, I bet that ambulance ain't going to be there either. <laughs> you know, it was a woman by the name of Minna Jones. She had a husband by the name of Johnny Jones. So Johnny Jones says, Minna, look here. He said, I don't feel so good. Do you love me? And I said, sure, I love you. He said, well, look, I don't feel so good. Look like I'm going to die. But if I die, he said, I want you to be true to me. Don't have nothing to do with nobody. He said, because if you do, I'm going to turn over in my grave. Minnie Jones said, darling, so you know I would cheat on you. So said, you go ahead if you go. I said, I'll be with you. When I die, I'll come to you. I'll be true. He said, all right. That time, Johnny Jones died. Six months later, he went to heaven, and Minnie Jones went looking for him. So she got up there. She said, hey, St. Peter says, is Johnny Jones up here? He said, no, 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 Johnny Jones. He said, look over here. He said, wait a minute. He called Bill. He said, Bill, do you know Johnny Jones? He said, no, I don't know the Johnny Jones. Men said, he's here. He told me to meet him here. He told me to meet him right. He said, well, he ain't here. So what do we look like? What happened? What the last thing he said? Well, the last thing he said to me, he said, Minnie, if you cheat on me, I'm going to turn over in my grave. And that time, Saul Peter looked at him and said, oh, he said, he's talking about revolving Jones. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
good yourself. You had a lot to do with dragging these people in here. Uh, the contract, the new one, is ready for you to sign. Let's go to the office. Well, it's certainly lucky for me, Mantan, that you don't have to go back to Hollywood for another six weeks. Because, boy, I can use that big business we're getting right now. Uh, thanks for the compliment, Harry. Uh, look, I got some very important business I want to talk to you about. Now, you're a regular guy, and I like you. I don't want you to think that I'm meddling in your business or anything like that, but I just got to tell you, it's a person who is very dear to you in the awful word. The word about you and this gambling and all kinds of stuff like that. They said that you done lost all the money that you made in this place the last month. 
Now, Harry, you can't do that. Harry, you know I like to gamble, but you don't see me trying to buck Duke in his crooked games. Why, you can't beat the game like that. You're right, man, Sam. Let's have a drink. Oh, I don't think I care about drinking today. Uh oh. My associate, Lefty Gomez. Hiya, babe. Uh, Lefty runs our club lights in Chicago. He was telling me what a sensation it'd be out there. Well, thanks for the compliment. Well, babe, I won't beat around the bush. How'd you like to earn yourself 500 a week more than you're getting here? I'm sorry, Duke, but I'm under contract to Harry. You know, he gave me my big break in show business, and I certainly wouldn't go back on him now. Well, if it's only Harry you're worried about, forget it. We can take care of him and without any trouble. Why, you owe me a shirt right now, and besides, maybe I'll own this joint before the night's over. Duke, there are some things more important than money, but I don't suppose you'd know much about that. Anyway, I'm sticking to Harry. Excuse me, I've got to keep an appointment. Can you imagine that? But why not? Would you? Uh... Hello, baby. Hello, honey. Uh, I pardon my intrusion of uh, well, why I'm sorry, Van Zandt. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we were just making a toast for Man Cam's new contract. He's going to be with us for six weeks more. I'll pour you a drink. Honey, I have some hot news for you. You can expect our lefty just offered me five hundred dollars more than you were paying me to work in this Chicago nightclub. Why that dirty double cross and rat? So he tried to buy you away from me. I'll break his crooked neck. That's what I'll do for you. What are you going to do with that gun? Stay away from him. He'll only get you in trouble, and you'll lose your license. Lord knows you can't afford that. For my sake, you've been drinking. I don't care whether you've been drinking or not. I'll splatter him all over. Lay him like a wall. Come back, Harry. Good grief. Call him. Back, Harry. Oh, that's all right, honey. Don't cry. Harry knows how to take care of himself. <laughs> I've been knowing Harry a long time. <laughs> Good gracious for me. I done missed my date. I got a date with a rug cutter. If I don't be there, she gonna cut my rug. <laughs> tonight to pay off. Remember, I'll come and get you. Don't worry, big shot. I'll be there. And don't try to ring in any crooked dice. Action. Action you've got, Papa. 
What's the matter? You afraid of your own dice? Never mind. Take two and shake them up. Mix them up and give me some action. One small... Well, man, man. Now, Mr. Wise Guy, we'll see what kind of a gambler you are. I shoot for 20, or have you got stuff enough to cover? Give me some money, Lefty. Take it easy, Duke. This guy's got those dice hot. Clean us out, sure. Don't worry, I'm watching him. Let me have it. But, Duke, this is all the money I've got. We need it for the club in Chicago. He'll win this, too. Come on, forget it. There's 10,000. Need your IOU for 10. Now, mix them up and give me a roll. I got the roll, Papa. Oh, baby. If you ever hit him, now's the time. Come on. Ow. He 11 and a natural. Uh, That's all, Duke. The sucker finally got lucky. I can get money. Now, wait a minute, Harry.
here like this, but... Girl, what is the matter you? with you? I don't care what you read in the paper. Why did you come in here and frighten me like that? Did you got no better sense than that? You're the worst thing I've ever seen. You give me the worst hard luck I've ever had in my life. I was walking down the street, and if I hadn't looked your way and looked in your eyes, I never would have had as much bad luck as I am now. Coming around here, scaring people to death and giving them all kind of hard luck and everything. I can't understand. You know I had hard luck every time I see you. Now I'm in the worst luck I've ever had in my life. Looking into your eyes, huh? I just wanted to give you this picture. Picture? Please. See, what did you want me to see about this picture? You just come up here with all that wood. You know you're hard luck to me. I was walking down the street and I had to look in your eyes. I would have been all right. Now I'm about to move, but you, you don't give me such hard luck. You got me bulging out in front. I don't know what is the matter with you. Why don't you go from there? What are you going to come around me for? Now, wait a minute. Now, I ain't used to crying. You, you, you know Danny don't mean nothing. Now, don't cry. Come, come on now. I, I'm up with you. What, 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 what did you want me to see about this picture? Good gracious for me. Hope and Jupiter Jimmy. Excuse me. See you again, honey. Wait a minute. Good gracious, honey. You got to kiss old daddy for one time. Good. Just think. I've been kissed by a real honest to goodness Hollywood movie star. Now I can die happy.
on the table, dear. We've been holding hands for more than a year, but we never seem to get nowhere. So let's get down to business. Hope you're not the type to sit and tease. How you expect my heart to be at ease? I'm so tired of breathing with the breeze. So let's get down to business. We walk, 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 walk around like clowns in a circus ring. And talk, 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 talk on down. But we don't say the right thing. Lonely always was a fan. That's the thing that I have never had. And I want to be loved oh so bad. So let's get down to business. You've been falling round and it talked all over town. That you're sparring for time. Well, if that is your line, I want My cards are on the table, dear. You've been holding hands for more than a year. But we never seem to get nowhere. So let's get down to business. Hope you're not the type to sit and tease. How you expect my heart to be at ease. I'm so tired of breathing with the breeze. Get down to business. We walk, 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 walk around like clowns in a circus ring. And talk, 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 talk on down. But we don't say the right thing. Matrimony always was a fad. That's the thing that I. Me made it all possible, man, man. 
Others didn't seem to have that statement. Harry, I'll tell you T&T left town so she could protect you. She didn't want to testify against you in court. Oh, it's no use, man, Tam. I don't blame her for quitting. It's just that I... Well, I can't go on without her. Nothing else seems to matter. I'm going to sell out and get away. Maybe I need a change. I had an offer to sell this afternoon. Yeah, but you can't sell. I feel so unhappy. But I understand that there's one thing certain to keep my heart from hurting. I've got to go to camp to see my man. I go to the movies, hear my favorite band. But it just don't thrill me. My nerves about to kill me. I've got to go to camp to see my man. He's been gone six months or more, but he's never been home on leave. That's why I sit and grieve. Something tells me that I've been deceived. So I have bought my ticket. Got it in my hand. Now goodbye, I'm leaving. About six o'clock this evening. I've got to go to camp to see my man. Take Rochester's job from Jack Bennett. 